Hi, my name is Martin from Printer Potty. What we're going to be showing you in this video is how to access and remove the waste ink pads in this Epsom XP510 and then how to replace them with a compatible product that will give you effectively double the waste pad capacity the original pad holder actually um, has in it. In terms of tools, almost always you're going to need a Phillips or crosshead screwdriver for taking out the screws and uh, if you can get a magnetic tip one it just makes things a lot easier right on this particular model this whole front panel here actually comes off and gives you access to the waste tube so what we're going to do the first screw is this one here i'm going to take that out put that to one side and the other one is this one, just here, which we're now going to remove. Like so. Once you've removed those two screws, this panel comes away like so. As you can see, there is a wire that runs down here. There is also a ribbon cable that runs into there. Just be very careful how you deal with these parts. Um, if you want to move things out of the way, I tend to remove this out of the channel that runs here and then just gently place that around over to the side. Just keeps things nice and tidy. Next thing we're going to do, you need to bring this one down remove this screw and that screw there. And this is why we have a magnetic tip. And this one. Obviously then you take away this front panel here. That then gives you access to this screw, which you now remove. And finally, you need to remove another screw on the underside of the printer. Now in this particular instance, I am going to turn the printer onto its side to actually show you. I've tipped the printer onto its left side. If you're looking at the front of the printer, being very careful about where I place this panel. The screw you now need to remove is this one here. This screw is slightly shorter than the other ones. So that one is specifically for this. That's the short screw there. Right, now that we've done that, what you have holding the pad holder in position are this, these two little holes and then these raised bumps on the actual pad holder. So what you need to do is basically get these bumps or raised bumps on the plastic housing to come out of these holes so that you can then remove the pad holder here. Grab hold, grab hold of this bit of plastic here, pull it out and then get a grip on this so that you can then pull. Please bear in mind, as I'm trying to show you this without my hands and tools and things getting in the way, um, it makes it a lot more difficult and I'm making it look more awkward. When you're actually doing it, your hands are gonna be here um, and just prizing everything out. Okay, so it looks awkward, but when you're not having to video it, it's a lot easier. So just to show you how to do this properly without messing around, pull out here, lever under here, pull, and out it comes. A lot easier. I'm just gonna pop the printer to one side for a second, because there's an important aspect of this particular printer model that I want to show you and something we're going to be dealing with as a separate video at a later stage. If you get this same plastic housing 
out of an XP 600, 760, 860, 800, whatever, you will get a pad holder that looks like this. The pads come all the way up to the top. You have, as you can see, the plastic holder is identical. These ones here are, well, these are the ones that are coming out of these printers and they're much, much smaller. There's your pad and your pad holder. Now, what we do is we sell what's known as our um, XP2 printer pad set. Now, what these are is literally just the pads. Um, they are the full fat, if you want to call it that, the full size set of pads like that. And what you do is you take out your half fill ones or the, the ones that you all used up, take those out, build up your block here, and then you put that back in. All right, we're just going to show you how to take the pads out of your pad holder and dispose of them and then how to put the replacement pads back in. So you've got your pad holder out. You now need to replace your pads. You have your pad set like this. What we need to do first and foremost is get all of the pads out of here and into a container like this um, so we can dispose of them. So what I use, tend to use is just a flathead screwdriver or something similar. And I just get hold and lever those pads out. Once you get enough of them out, you can then just grab and pull. And just to sort of prove my point from earlier, that is what you get. It's actually not three fifths at all. It's more like half, okay? So you're getting double when you actually get our pad set and replace them. So now that we've removed the pads from in here, I wouldn't actually recommend you take this to the sink and washing out unless it's absolutely sodden. And if you do, pour water into the sink, wash it in that water rather than jetting it from the tap into the pad holder, okay? And just wipe it round with some kitchen towel like that till it's relatively clean. And then it's time to rebuild your pads. Now we're going to build our pad set from this to get it into there. In case you're wondering, these two parts at the bottom here, these are spares. These are included so that you can make up any um, thickness that's lost from the variance that happens in these pads. Sometimes they're thicker, sometimes they're thinner. Just a um, an aspect of naturally made material because this is wool felt okay as you can see these are numbered and what you're doing is basically putting them together in order so the way i tend to do this is part one part two on top then we have three part threes those will go on top as well and finally we have part four like that when you put your pad block together you can see these cutouts inside they match up with these bits here okay when you actually look inside that's what they will look like all right so what we're going to do turn that like that and then we're just going to test from above to see how well this lot fits in and whether or not we need to add any extra pads now in this particular instance i can see straight away it's quite a big gap down there we need at least one, possibly, but actually I think we're going to go with both. Both of those spare pads that we've got here, we'll insert those in the relevant places into our block so we can then put everything in. Okay, so we just take that out. Now this particular pad here is a part three. So that can go there. And this bit here is a part two in this particular instance. So I'm going to put that between parts one and two like that. Okay, that then gives us a slightly thicker pad set that we can put in. It's then a case of putting our pad set into our pad holder here and getting it all nice and tidy. As you can see, that's a nice tidy little fit. Just reorganize the pad slightly and you end up with a pad set like that. Don't worry too much if everything isn't in perfect alignment it doesn't matter the whole point is that these are all in the container they're not sticking massively up above the edge here and they will fit just fine 
in the printer when you go to insert it back in. So we've replaced the pads in our pad holder and we now want to put the printer back together. What we do is we get our filled pads and pad holder and we slide them back in to exactly the same spot that we took them out of. So what we do is just push that home. You hear the click. You can hear that the little lugs there have gone back in. We then get our short screw. I'll just show you that again. The short screw that we took out earlier and we put that back in here. We can now turn our printer back onto its normal um, base and then continue to put the printer back together. So being particularly careful, I'm going to then watching out for these wires here and it's now time to put this screw back in here. Now again it is a silver screw. As a general rule, silver screws are hidden on a black printer like this. So we can now put our silver screw in there. Once we've done that, we can then replace this panel here. When you're putting this back on, just take a little bit of time with it and it will slide back into position. I seem to be finding that if you take it a slight upward angle like this, so when you try to put this back on, we do slight upward angle and it slides back into position. Now that I've done that, my first screw needs to go in to there. That's the silver one. And then the black screw needs to go in to this hole just there. like that. Okay, that's now nicely in. Then what we do is we open up the top if for whatever reason you've closed it. We need to revert any changes we made to the path of that wire. So in this case, I'm putting that back under that little knob in there, pressing it down into those little channels that have gone on there. That gets it back into position. Made sure that there's no crimping or anything that there. Make sure that ribbon cable goes up over the top and then that will path quite nicely into position like so. Next thing to do is then replace our last two screws, one here and one up here. So I'll do that now. one screw done and the other one which I'm going to put in just here. Aside from resetting the waste counter which you use the WIC reset key and WIC reset utility to do, you've now got your printer back up and running. So there you go. That's how you replace the waste pads on an Epson XP 510 printer. All of the stuff about the size of the waste pads and the capacity and everything else is obviously a serious point that Epson designers need to actually address. But in terms of being able to get your printer back up and running again, you can use our XP2 printer pad set, which is obviously a much more cost-effective approach than using Epsom service centers. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll get much more use out of this printer instead of sending it to landfill unnecessarily early. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful, certainly food for thought, but please do give us a like, a thumbs up, share if you know other people who have hit this problem and perhaps don't know about it, um, so that we can keep these printers running. And um, yeah, please subscribe if you're interested in this or any other content of Seminar Nature. We'd love to see you back. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.